got uh, Jeffrey Allen sitting next to me here, uh, my colleague, um, also working with One Climate. Uh, he's actually been monitoring uh, the OneClimate.net website and also Twitter, looking around uh, the internet for interesting articles related to our discussion. And I'll remind our viewers that you can uh, put your questions forward to One Climate. Jeff, uh, what have you come up with? Yeah, a lot of people on Twitter are talking about a new report uh, that just actually came out from Canada today about how local governments in Canada can deal with uh, climate change. And this new report has some interesting findings. Uh, it says that um, over a quarter of emissions from cities could be reduced already with uh, actions that don't cost anything or actually could earn money for the city. And then another two thirds of the of the rest of the emissions could be reduced could be reduced very cheaply. Is that what you're seeing in cities in India as well? Is it cheap to reduce emissions or is it quite expensive in India? Uh, that is very well answered. I'll say that the question, whoever is answered. Uh, this is where actually we started uh, uh, the climate change issue in India. I never talked to a mayor in India or a South Asian country uh, uh, saying that we don't want we want to come and address your uh, climate issues. But we said that how do we uh, save your energy bill? How do we improve your energy efficiency? So it's like a financial saving at the same time you're also addressing your uh, climate issues, uh, reducing the carbon emissions, that's mostly maybe the mitigation way of uh, addressing the climate issue. But that is where it clicked with with these developing countries. They, they are poor, they, they, they don't have money to make big investments, but that is really, if, if I can save even one rupee uh, for an Indian government, uh, Indian local government, or, 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 or one rupee, even uh, one dollar to a Sri Lankan local government or a Bangladesh local government, it's really helping them like this thing. So what we said is, like, we mostly has given them uh, uh, low-cost, no-cost solutions, how they can come out and uh, address these climate change issues. And only in few cases we talked about uh, major investments. So I agree completely with, with, the, with that question, that it and really help them out. Yeah. Jeff, I think you've you got another question. Yeah, there's also a discussion on Justin TV where people are watching this. Um, some people, uh, we've been hearing some talk in recent days, are talking about overpopulation. Now, there are too many people in the world for the amount of resources that exist. Uh, and, and one viewer says, uh, actually, I think overpopulation is not the problem. The fact that the US and UK use 10 or 20 times more resources than someone in Africa or probably in India as well, they think that's the problem. Now, India is also a highly populated country. How do you see those, those two issues shaking out? Uh, this debate is going on uh, quite long. I'll say that for the last uh, few months, it has come out again. Uh, people are, are asking, like, OK, you have more population, so you're using more. But then I, I agree again with that question, like, you, you, you consume 20 to 25 times more than uh, the U.S. Uh, citizens consume more than what, what a, a, a Indian uh, citizen or, or, or an African citizen is consuming that. So try to balance it out. I'll say that that is what is uh, uh, an issue. Uh, so I agree maybe with, with, with and uh, I know you've just uh, released a report looking at the emissions profiles of um, cities in South Asia and, and uh, that uh, ECLE has been doing similar reports all around the world. And that led me to think, um, how much uh, kind of similarity and continuity do you find? Do actually do, do cities in South Asia face very similar issues to those in Europe and, and uh, those in Africa? Or, or do they face very different issues? Uh it's, it's again maybe developing and developed countries. So that is the way I, I can I can see that. But then every city all over the world, I can say I, I we have uh, more than 500 odd cities as U.S. cities as our members and who are committed to the climate change, who are committed to reduce, re reducing in the carbon emissions. Uh, same as in South Asia or in Australia or in Europe or in Africa. So, so cities, if you see that that is really happening, that they're really committed to help the national governments to combat this climate change issues. And uh, I, I hope the process will continue and, and uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and further. Right. Jeff, I think you've got something else. Yeah, there's another question here. Uh, one viewer in London wants to know, uh, do you think climate change will cause conflict between cities and rural areas? And he says in the UK, most energy is used in cities, but rural areas sometimes don't want the wind turbines near them. Do, do you think there's an urban-rural divide? Uh, but it's, it's a global issue. Like I don't see that there is an urban-rural divide. It's going to affect the urban person as well as the same as the rural person because it's not just only related to only an urban issue or a rural issue. This is a global issue. Uh, but maybe the urban people will affect more than the rural people. But everybody is going to affect, I'll, I'll say that.
And uh, I just wanted to, to ask about your experiences here at the conference. There seems to be a lot of um, lobbying by local governments and, and kind of certainly city mayors have been quite um, high profile here. Do you feel that, uh, that cities and local governments have had a, an effective voice at the COP? And, and if so, um, what progress do you think you're achieving here? We see that uh, there is an important role for the local governments. That's what uh, we believe in and the local governments believe in. Uh, we have uh, a, a mayor summit is happening next week, uh, invited by the Copenhagen mayor. Uh, we are also ECLE is part of that. Actually, ECLE is bringing like nearly 70 odd uh, uh, mayors all over the world. Uh, and uh, we, we also have World Mayors Council on Climate Change, which uh, we are bringing all the mayors to, to come out and to sign uh, yeah, uh, commitments. So that is really, I, I see that an important role of the local governments. And, and uh, we are happy uh, the way the things are happening. And uh, we, as I said previously also, we requested most of these national governments uh, to take it forward in, in their dialogues uh, to give an important role to the local governments. Uh, and I hope uh, a final text uh, comes out from, from the Copenhagen, we'll have that uh, references on the local governments. And just, just uh, as a final question before we wrap up, um, I know that uh, back in the UK, the kind of internal politics within uh, local governance structures can have quite a big effect on, on uh, whether, on, on how policies are taken forward. Do you find that a big issue might be that departments, certain departments don't work together and, and how do you try and overcome these internal kind of difficulties within local authorities and local government structures? Uh, they have to come out. I know I agree with uh, some of your observations, uh, but but then uh, you have to see as a bigger picture and, and I, I hope that uh, they will come out of, of this uh, departmental issues that are within the politics within the local governments. <laughs> Uh, to, to see that how, how uh, they can uh, address the main concern uh, rather than uh, just infight uh, each other <laughs> within, within the local governments. Hey. Imani, thanks very much for joining us. I think uh, we'll leave it there just as some of the youth groups here are uh, uh, bursting into, uh, uh, into noise. Um, so thanks very much for uh, coming along and uh, we look forward to catching up with you later in the conference. Thank you.